If you like videos like this one, then don't subscribe because I'm not gonna be making any more of them. So after being one of the most confused devs on YouTube for about a year, I recently got an offer from Fang, which prompted a lot of people to send me messages like, damn dude, I never thought I could get into Fang, but after seeing you do it, now I have hope that I can do it too. Which isn't really a compliment, it kinda just means, damn dude, you did it? Okay, then anybody could probably do it, right? Which hurts my feelings a little bit, but it's also kind of true. Like, I do think anybody can do it. Like, I'm not very smart or special. So, I figured that maybe the way that I study or my philosophy towards studying has some bearing to it. So, I've decided that I'll make a video talking about how you can go from a complete, you know, complete beginner who doesn't know anything, like I didn't even know a hash map was a year ago, to someone who can you know, get offers from Fang. So yeah, wherever you are on the spectrum, you know, to beginner, somewhere intermediate, I think this video can definitely help you. The first thing I wanna talk about before I talk about like the specifics is my general philosophy towards learning. So the way I learn is a bit like the way you should write an essay. So the proper way to write an essay is to first start with an outline, which is basically, you know, all of the ideas you have from beginning to end, the structure of it, but it's not very detailed. And the next step is you turn that into a rough draft and then the final product. And I think this is very different from how colleges teach. Colleges kind of more so go very deep into one topic and then move on to the next, which I would equate to writing an essay by writing the fuck out of paragraph one, perfecting it, and then paragraph two, perfecting it, and then paragraph two, and then so on. Which I don't think is the proper way you should write an essay. You should write all of it very roughly and then build on top of the knowledge like that. So that's where I think college messes up, and that's why I think the proper way to learn is um, by doing something like that. So I apply that to pretty much everything, and for example, whenever I have a class in college, I try to spend at least a few days trying to learn the entire topic in a very uh, general way. That's kind of that's kind of how I do well in school, is I learn the topic before school even starts. And then since I have like this general understanding of the topic, I have these dots. They're scattered, they're all over the place, but I have these dots. Then when I go deep into the topic in my college courses, I'm filling in those dots. And then since I have such general scattered dots on knowledge about it already, it can like fill in, it can connect to what I already know. And then I have context for the bigger picture. That's what learning everything broadly and then learning it in detail does. It gives you that bigger picture to connect the dots along the way. I don't know if that made any sense, but if you're still with me, that's my general philosophy on learning. And here's how I apply that to getting good ideas, tricks, and algorithms. So I made a four-step process that I call GRIP. Um, G, G is for general understanding. So this is the first step. This is where you should basically know all the major topics very, very poorly or very uh, surface level. So the resource I would recommend for that is this video called Data Structures and Algorithms in 15 Minutes. Now, you may call me a bit biased because it's my video, but I, I promise genuinely, I do think this is the best video to get that general knowledge in a, in a quick amount of time. And I think this is the only video ever that really does give you all this knowledge in a very concise format. But another resource you can use to get this general knowledge is in coding interview books, like Elements of the Programming, programming Interview in Python and Cracking the Coding Interview, before each topic where it gives you a bunch of questions, there is about one page of just explaining the data structure. So for example, I never used Cracking the Coding Interview, so I can't really speak on that. I think, uh, I'm not a big fan of that book, but for Elements of the Programming Interview, which I did use, let's say they have a bunch of questions on uh, heaps. So the heap chapter, the first page will pretty much just tell you like what the heap is or how to use the heap in a very surface level way, but it's, it's workable. You know, it, it does give you that general idea. So that's the first step. Get that surface level knowledge on pretty much everything because it is so much easier to learn in detail when you already have that surface level knowledge. Now R is for rough draft. So you've watched my video or you've read the first page in each chapter for elements of the programming interview. Now you kind of understand the data structures, but you don't really understand the data structures. So this is the stage where in an essay you would turn the outline into a rough draft, where you would actually get that you know foundational knowledge to a point where you sort of know what you're talking about now. So resources for this I would recommend is Joma class. So you can go to trend.jomaclass.com 
and these and he has very detailed but very to the point videos. It also comes with a course for learning basic Python. But the thing I like about Joma class is the animations and just how great of a job he did to make something so complicated into something that you can understand in very simple terms. The other resource I would recommend, and I feel like I'm on repeat, I've been recommending these two resources for like the past two weeks straight. So I'm having a hard time just saying this over and over again. The other resource I'm gonna recommend are these MIT lectures. Very good free option. Um, they're a bit more theoretical. I'd say, you know, at a comprehension level, the Joma class is a bit easier to understand. But if you really do sit through these MIT lectures, I think you're definitely gonna be in a great place. I is for implement, and I think this is where most people fuck up. I think this is why so many, especially uh, so many self-taught devs, have a really hard time learning data structures and algorithms is because they skip over this step. And this step is instrumental to really understanding data structures and algorithms, in my opinion. So implement, what do I mean by that? So I kind of want you to think about uh, spoiled kids for a second. Kids that are spoiled, like they're just given everything because they have very rich parents, they usually turn out to be like very piece of shit people. They're usually not really good at anything. I know a few spoiled kids that have almost no life skills because they've had everything handed to them. I think modern programming languages sort of turn you into that spoiled kid. So what do I mean by that? So data structures, like for example, uh, in Python, to use a heap, all you have to do is import heap queue, or to use a queue, all you have to do is import queue. Now, I definitely recommend this is how you do it in a coding interview. You should definitely just be importing these library functions, but if you've never really implemented your own heap from scratch, if you've never implemented your own queue from scratch, you really do take it for granted. I've been watching a lot of Gordon Ramsay lately, and Gordon Ramsay was talking about how he makes his kids, like they, he takes his kids to a farm where they have to watch the animals get slaughtered before they eat it. And the reason Gordon Ramsay does this is because it really teaches the kids to respect where their food com comes from and really understand where the food comes from. And speaking of Gordon Ramsay, G Gordon Ramsay, he can, like top class chefs, they can hire people to cook for them because they've already earned it. They've went through it themselves. But people that use these library functions, such as, you know, import heap queue, if you've never implemented it yourself, you haven't truly earned it, in my opinion. I think just once, and if possible, I would also try to use like C++, so you really like understand what's truly going on underneath it. But if you should, if you implement heap queue for yourself at least once, if you implement the sorting algorithms for yourself once, then whenever you call it after that, it brings you to a place where you're not just taking it for granted. You're understanding the time complexities of what's being called. You're understanding what's really going on. I definitely believe every major data structure definitely needs to be implemented from scratch. And then once you already have earned it, then yeah, go ahead, use, use Python heap queue, use Python DQ, uh, because in a coding interview, obviously you don't wanna be <laughs> implementing it from scratch then. And another example is a hash map. Definitely you can use Python's dictionary but you should implement your own hash map just once or else you're just that spoiled piece of shit kid who's just taking it for granted. You never really know what's going on. So that's what the I stands for. The last one is P, pattern recognition. This is a stage where you're gonna spend by far the most time. If you have a year to practice, which <laughs> you probably don't, but okay, let's do six months. If you have six months to practice, I would say that you should probably spend about one day on G, which is general understanding, you should spend about one month or maybe two weeks to a month on R. So like, you know, the rough draft, just like building on top of that knowledge. Implementation to once again be about two more weeks and then the rest of the time to just go to P. Pattern recognition will take so much time and this is the part where it gets really frustrating and you're gonna kind of beat yourself up over it. So to do pattern recognition, I recommend just doing a ton of lead code questions. Do some by, uh, sorted by category, which helps and then do some not sorted by category where your mind has to figure out what category uh, the question is in. Now, there's no shortcut to this ever. I don't care what course you buy, I don't care what you pay for, I don't care how much money you spend, there is no shortcut around this step. This step will take so much time, unless you're like just a genius, but I mean generally, this step will take so much time and the only way is you just have to keep doing questions so your mind can get used to understanding. Like for example, if you hear a question and the best solution is to use a graph. The leap from knowing that a graph exists 
to knowing that this question is best modeled as a graph, that's a huge leap. And the only way is just keep doing questions. So there's nothing else to it. There's no secret trick. These four steps is literally all it's gonna take. I'm definitely still in that P stage. Um, I haven't mastered the subject quite yet. I mean, I guess technically you can never really master it. I mean, I guess you're like, unless it's like William Lin, then yeah, I guess you kind of have. But I, I have gotten a fang offer, but I still can't say that I would reliably pass, you know, every interview ever. So this stage, I mean, you could honestly spend years in here, but I would say generally shoot for about 250 lead code questions. And I think you're pretty set for fang interviews. You know, you might still have a bad day and you might still trip up or get nervous, but at 250, I'd say, yeah, you could probably pass most fang interviews. So that's the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm not going to make any more of these because I hate freaking talking about education. Uh, yeah, goodbye.